Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be taking a look at how Donny van der Beek will fit into Solskjaer's Manchester United. Taking a look at starting 11 formations and tactics. Remember to smash that like button if you want to see Jadon Sancho at Manchester United. And of course, subscribe if you are new. Anyway, it's time. Let's get this party started. On the 2nd of September 2020, Donny van der Beek completed his move to Manchester United, reportedly costing around 40 million euros plus add-ons and signing a five-year contract with the club. The 23-year-old Dutchman spent his career at Ajax and was integral to the club's Champions League run last season. In his 175 appearances for Ajax, van der Beek has scored 41 goals, registering 34 assists, being directly involved in a goal every 165 minutes. But how will he fit into Manchester United? Before we answer that, it's important to understand what kind of player van der Beek is. He made his breakthrough at Ajax in a 4-3-3 as the number six, but rose to prominence under the tutelage of Eric Ten Hag, who did away with Ajax's iconic system in favour of a 4-2-1-3. In this system, van der Beek has mainly operated as a side's number 10, but he's also played in the pivot a number of times this season. He played in that position against Chelsea in the Champions League. When he scored Ajax's fourth goal of the game after making a trademark late surge into the box and finished as calmly as ever. Despite putting in a number of good performances from a deeper role, Van der Beek is without doubt at his best from that number 10 position, where he's able to drift in search of space, almost a bit of a central Ram Deuter. Ajax's system under Eric Ten Hag features a lot of positional rotation, especially amongst the front four. Because of this, Donny is a very, very versatile player in the final third. Comfortable as a nominal striker, out wide or even in the hole. The variety of positions taken up by Van der Beek has made him such a well-rounded footballer. He's as comfortable out wide where he can either make intelligent runs often from out to in behind the fullback before crossing low for teammates as he is when he's playing centrally where again he uses intelligence to pick up dangerous positions where he can get in behind and fire those low crosses to teammates. He particularly loves making runs on the blind side of centre halves or full backs, where the defenders are usually too late to stop him. Combining his intelligence with excellent technical ability makes Donny a very, very good footballer, highlighted perfectly by his goal against Spurs. Lasse Schöner is in possession after recovering a loose ball. He fires it into Donny, who controls it, and plays it simple to Ziyech, who switches the ball out to Neres. Neres then comes back and gives it to Schöner. He squares it to Ziyech, who spots and picks out Van der Beek to score. A really great bit of play from the number 10, who leaves all the flashy stuff and flary stuff to Hakim Ziyech, but executes the important stuff so well, from the touch to get away from the pressure to open the play up to the unassuming position he takes up and the intelligence not to get drawn to the ball, instead staying free and finishing superbly with a little feint, which is almost his trademark. It's something we've seen him do a number of times in 1v1 positions to great effect, again in the Champions League, this time versus Juve. St. Graven with the ball, his cross is blocked and Ziyech's his shot is deflected. Donny instantly controls it, shimmies and rolls the ball into the corner. A great exhibition of technical quality, first with the intelligence to stay on side so he can react to the shot, then the touch to control the ball instantly before shimmying to unsettling the goalkeeper and then just finishing into that bottom corner. Along with these composed low finishes, Donny shows excellent technique with volley finishes, with three out of his nine Eredivisie goals this season coming from volleys. But whilst in possession, he operates almost more like a goal scoring second striker than a traditional playmaker. Out of possession, he plays more like a box to box central midfielder. He works exceedingly hard in the press putting pressure on the opponents before forcing a tackle. Whilst his aggression is good, there can be times where he's slightly overeager and can get bypassed or giving a foul away. That being said, he's a very diligent defender, often tracking back and regaining possession from the blind side. In the Eredivisie last season, Van der Beek won possession through tackles and interceptions 2.7 times per game, with Fred and Matic the only non-defenders for Manchester United that won possession more in the league. Despite comparable numbers and a higher tackle win rate than both Fred and Matic, Van der Beek is definitely not suited to the holding midfield role. When he's played there for Ajax and the ball's on the other side of the pitch, 
with the opposition coming inside, he can get drawn to the ball instead of screening the defence, which could cause problems. Not something you want from your defensive midfielder to do, but give him a defensive partner, he's absolutely fantastic. It's kind of highlighted uh, against Chelsea in the Champions League there. The direct dribblers were causing the midfield partner in Martinez to get pulled higher up the pitch, leading Donny as a sole holder. Donny was trying to win the ball back, being quite aggressive, and then Mason Mount was picking up a little pocket of space behind him, something that wouldn't happen if you played a traditional defensive midfielder next to him. I'm not saying that he couldn't learn the position. Of course, he's from the Ajax Youth Academy. When they come up through the ranks, they play every single position on the fit pitch, giving them that game intelligence that Donny clearly has. And it'd be a bit of a waste to sign a player of Donny's attacking potential in that deeper position, using him in that sort of defensive role. Playing him as a holding midfielder would also limit his ability to get into the opponent's box, one of his biggest strengths, which he highlighted himself speaking to MUTV. I'm a midfielder that likes coming in the box, making runs, goals, assists. A lot of the time, I cover a lot of distance in games. This is also a thing that is a strength for me, to get into the box of the opponent. And this is backed up by the stats, with him taking more shots from inside the penalty area than any other Ajax player in both the Eredivisie and European competitions this season. So with all that considered, how will he fit into Manchester United? Assuming that Solskjaer continues with the 4-2-3-1 and expecting to ride cover both at number 10 and Pogba's number 8 role. But unfortunately, Manchester United fans don't expect Bruno, Pogba and Donny to start on a midfield three together. The only feasible way this trio would work week in, week out is if the fullbacks held their position with the wingers holding the width and the midfielders moving wide to create overloads, usually created by a fullback. But this could cause major problems centrally in the negative transition, so don't expect this to be a common lineup unless Bruno is shifted wide and Van der Beek is accommodated in that number 10 position to add in either a Fred, McTominay or Nemanja Matic. Instead, I can simply see Van der Beek offering competition to the pair at the start or as an option to change the game off the bench, at least as long as Oli sticks to this midfield trio in this shape. The most likely place for Van der Beek in the starting 11 is in a 4-4-2 diamond. This could be quite disgusting. Operating as the number 10, with Bruno and Pogba deeper in midfield. This shape would make great use of the trio's attributes. It gives Pogba and Bruno time in possession to get involved with the build-up before either picking defence-splitting passes or getting long shots off. Whilst this would be a very fluid position, Van der Beek could be free to drift in searching of space, making those dangerous runs behind and then looking for those low crosses to the fullbacks or getting into those goal scoring positions himself, doing a little shimmy and putting the ball into the back of the net. Playing alongside the pair would also allow Donny to keep his game nice and simple and effective, moving the ball on quickly and efficiently before moving into the space where he can impact the game, something he did really well with Hakim Ziyech. And by playing behind wide forwards, in Martial, Greenwood or Rashford, they would be free to drift wide if they saw fit, knowing that Van der Beek could take up that striking position if the ball falls to him, knowing that he's got the calmness and the ability to finish low as he always does. The biggest thing about Van der Beek is his intelligence. He'll watch and react to his teammates, meaning that if a striker makes a run into the six yard box, he'll stand on the penalty spot and wait for the cutback either taking the attention away from his teammates or leaving himself in the space where he can use excellent technique and composure to finish. Signing Donny for 40 million in this current climate would prove to be excellent business. Not only does it provide cover and offer solutions to selection problems, but he adds genuine first team quality to the side. And at just 23 years old, he's got the best years ahead of him in his career at Old Trafford. But anyway guys, what do you think? Will Donny van der Beek be a success at Manchester United? And where do you think he'll play the most this season? Let me know in the comments below. I've been Statman Dave. See you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?